Welcome back to our video module on damp harmonic motion. Let's pick up where we left off. Now this gives us a little bit of a feel, but we want more than this. Start off with our free body diagram. So we can do the force of the spring, and the green one would be the force damping, the damping force. And now that said, let's try and uh, use our equations of motion. So that's negative kx and the drag force is negative bx dot. Great, now we can plug in these equations and see what we get. mx double dot plus bx plus kx equals zero. So get used to this. This type of thing we're going to see all the time. Now as I look at this I see position, velocity, acceleration. All of these are going to combine together to go to zero. So I need something whose first derivative and second derivative are of similar form. You probably already know exactly what we're going to look at. We're going to say that x of t is equal to a e to the alpha t. We're going to say it's some exponential. Let's pretend it's an exponential and let's see what happens. Here we go. We'll plug in our numbers and see what we get. Let's see if that's x, x dot is a alpha e to the alpha t, x double dot is a alpha squared e to the alpha t, and I'm not saying what a or alpha is. They could be complex, they could be real, they could be combinations of numbers, they could be anything. Right now I'm just trying to find something that'll solve this equation or put it in the correct form. So what do we got? We got m a alpha squared and you know just just for kicks e alpha t I'm gonna say that's equal to the triangle some delta plus b a alpha and that's just because I want to sh save space plus k a delta equals zero I see in this that we have a uh, e to the alpha t on all of these so I'm going to, I know that these terms are going to have to meet some sort of quadratic with this function in here. So I can, I can disregard it and I get 0 equals m alpha squared plus b alpha plus k. Okay, so this is a quadratic. We know what alpha is. This will be our coefficient right here. Alpha equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4mk all over 2m. Great, so we have some sort of form for solving or for finding out exactly what this coefficient is up here. And this is really possibly the most important coefficient or the most important term in all of our damped harmonic motion because we see something special happening here. We see that with underneath this radical that b squared minus 4mk that could be positive in which case you have some sort of real solution. It could be a negative in which case you have e to the negative or e, I'm sorry e to some imaginary exponent in which case you're gonna have oscillations from uh, from Euler or you're gonna see this go to zero in which case you're gonna have a really simple solution. Now let's flesh this out a little bit more. Let's first pretend that it's real. So in that case, so if the term b squared is greater than 4mk, then we have a real term in here. And if that's the case, we're gonna have an exponent, e to the alpha t, what does that look like? That looks like our overdamped solution. So in our overdamp solution, take a look. We have e to the alpha t plus b e to the beta t. Now does that make sense? Overdamped. Overdamped is where the damping is really, really significant. So what do we see here? We see that the damping term is really big and it's bigger than some sort of combination of the mass and the spring. We're not quite, we can't quite intuit our way there, but we can say that it does make sense at a very basic level. We see that we have a real exponent, we see that the b squared term is really high, and we expect basically an exponential behavior. The next one we, I want to look at is what happens if 
this term is complex. So in that case, it's b squared is less than 4mk. Now, our e to the alpha t, that's going to be a complex exponent, which, for as a quick reminder, that's going to be, um, remember, e to the i, we'll say alpha t equals cosine alpha t plus i sine alpha t from Euler. So right now, we're looking at some sort of periodic function, which is what we would expect. b squared, this is less. That means the damping coefficient is going to be less than some sort of combination of the mass and the spring. Well, you know, our original term, we had a damping which was zero, in which case you do see an oscillation. And we can go back up to the top and see that. That is our underdamp situation. So I, I wrote down critical balance here. I think what I meant was that the spring and the damping forces are balanced. What we say is we call it uh, critical damping. Um, I'll keep that balance in there because, I mean, I guess it is a balance of spring and uh, damping forces, but we really we say it's critical damping. So you can infer right now, what is the critical damping? Well, that's when this term, b squared, equals 4mk. And in that term, we have um, we have an e to an alpha t. And from your recollection of fourth semester calculus, you know you're going to have an e to the alpha t. And you might have some other term, t, e to the alpha t. And you know this should look familiar. We just saw it up here at the critical damping, where we have the function of time is the combination of two exponentials. And in this case, alpha really easily is negative b over 2m. So this is really actually what I find to be one of the more interesting solutions because I, I see it as being just the perfect balance between um, spring and damping. So in summary, what we've seen is by introducing damping, we can create a more realistic model. And moreover, we can intuit our way to what some of these graphs might look like. This a little bit opens our eyes that when we finally use our mathematics, use our exponentials with our free body diagram and our equations of motion, we come up with a very interesting and kind of somewhat peculiar mathematical situation when we solve for our quadratic. That gives us three possible possibilities and we can see that mathematically they're very significant, the difference between these three. We have the, oops, we have the overdamped, we have the underdamped, and we have the critically damped right here. Given our time situation, let's stop our video now and we'll pick up our train of thought on our next video.